Hopefully, the next eight to ten minutes will help you win your fantasy leagues this year. Today, I'll take a look at potential risky players to draft for the 2022-23 NBA season. Now, to make things clear, I'm not saying you should completely avoid drafting any player, but instead you should try to find the best value in every round and don't overpay or reach just to have a certain player on your team. To make things easier, I'll use the current Yahoo Fantasy Basketball preseason rankings as a guideline to help you identify some potential fantasy landmines you might want to avoid. Now, if you play on different platforms like ESPN, Fantrax, or something else, you can always cross-reference and check out the ranking differences. Generally speaking, I feel like the player rankings are somewhat similar but not exactly the same. So depending on which platform you play on, you might be able to exploit the rankings a little bit and find some great value on certain NBA players. Starting in the top 10, you can see that most of these players are actually pretty safe picks to give you elite fantasy value. I especially like players like Jokic, Giannis, uh, Luka Doncic, who are all in very good fantasy situations to give you monster fantasy numbers this year. But if I had to pick one player in the top 5 who I think might be a little bit too risky to take for me is Kevin Durant of the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously at his best, he is an elite fantasy basketball player and can single-handedly carry your team in many categories throughout the season. But two things that concern me taking Durant with such a high pick is one, his health, and two, potential off-court issues and drama. He will be 34 this season, and over the past few years, especially since joining the Brooklyn Nets, Durant actually missed a large chunk of games in both years. He played 35 games in 2021 and only 55 out of 82 games last season. So moving forward, uh, no matter where he plays, I think it is very unlikely that we will see 78 games out of Durant like we did in Golden State. Because at his age, it's much harder to recover from serious injuries. So whatever team he plays on will probably be extra cautious with his mitts and likely load manage him to try to keep him healthy for the playoffs subscribe also if he doesn't get traded by the nets before the start of the season there's always the potential that they're either going to hold him out or simply just limit his minutes or not let him play early on because essentially that's what i would do right to protect my asset so that he doesn't get injured otherwise the brooklyn nets just can't trade him so if things go bad then i feel like drafting durant might actually put some of your fantasy teams in a tough spot to start the season and you might have to play catch up in the second half just to make the playoffs. How about you? Do you think Durant is a risky pick at third overall? Or am I being a little bit too pessimistic about the whole Durant situation? Let me know in the comments below. Next player in the top 10 I'm not 100% sold on is... Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Obviously, Cat was a very elite fantasy player for a long, long time, but I feel like this might be the first season where we start to see his fantasy numbers start to drop off. Main reason is because the roster around him in Minnesota this season is probably the best we have seen in his NBA career. Especially with Rudy Gobert now in the picture, the stats tell us that he could be a huge threat to Cat's rebounds, blocks, field goal percentage, and easy points around the basket. So this season, we might actually see more of a perimeter Carl Anthony Towns where we see him take a lot more jump shots. Besides that, they also have two very ball dominant players on their backcourt in Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell. If they stay healthy, both will probably take away usage and shots from Cat as well, especially with Anthony Edwards because it sounds like Minnesota seems to be very high on him and believe he will be a future superstar for the team, which probably means Cat might not be the number one option on as many nights going forward. In many ways, I see Cat's situation somewhat similar to what happened to John Collins of the Atlanta Hawks a few years ago. This was back when Trey Young started to blow up and they also brought in Clint Capella as a starting center. As a result, we saw John Collins numbers drop off for a few seasons after that. So heading to this year, I feel like a lot has to go right for Cat's fantasy numbers to remain the same and to keep him in the conversation as a top 10 fantasy basketball player. Based on the preseason rankings, at his position, I wouldn't be surprised to see him fall in some drafts actually. Because to be quite honest, a name like Lamelo Ball at number 11 might be too tempting to pass up for many fantasy owners be included. How about you? What do you think about Carl Anthony Towns fantasy upside this year? And will he remain a top 10 fantasy player by the end of next season? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe. Subscribe.
moving down to the 11 to 20 range. I feel like this is probably one of the riskier ranges in a lot of fantasy basketball drafts this year. And this is probably an area where you'll deal with a lot of potential fantasy landmines. One high profile name who I feel like could also turn out to be somewhat of a fantasy flop in this range includes Kyrie Irving. Now like KD, uh, Kyrie puts up amazing fantasy numbers when he's playing. Yes, when he's playing and is arguably still a top 10 overall fantasy player. From afar, it sounds like he might play a lot this year, but to me at least, he's still somewhat of a high risk, high reward pick in this range, mainly because he has little history of playing more than 80% of the season. In his 11 year NBA career, Kyrie has only played more than 70 games twice in his entire career. As a Brooklyn Net, he only averaged 34 games per season in his last three years. Whether it is from off-court issues or on-court issues, injuries, Kyrie always seems to have a stretch during the year where he misses a good 10 to 20 games. So the way I see it, it's like having a top tier employee at your company who only shows up to work maybe 60% of the time. Yes, he gets the job done and actually does an amazing job when he shows up. But I don't know about you, but I think many bosses would rather have someone who is a little bit less skilled but actually shows up 85 to 90% of the time. That's just my opinion. So at the 10 to 16 range, I think some actually would agree that Kyrie is definitely one of the riskier picks there. How about you? How do you feel about Kyrie? Would you take him at that range? Another top tier player who I feel like is just entering his decline is Anthony Davis of the LA Lakers. Now, ever since joining the Lakers and sharing the floor with LeBron, we already saw a slow decline in his usage scoring and rebounding numbers. And like prior years, injuries have been a major problem for AD over his past three seasons in LA. He only averaged 46 games per season as a Laker. So if you do the math, he only played a little over 50% of the available games, which isn't great in my opinion, especially if you are reaching for him in snake drafts with an early second round pick or breaking the bank just to land him in your auction drafts. Cause like Kyrie, availability might be an issue again for Anthony Davis this year. Finally, we can't forget that AD will be turning 30 next year. So combine that with his history of injuries, I think the Lakers will be even more cautious with his health and likely won't drive him to the ground like the Pelicans did with him a few years back. What are your thoughts on AD? Do you think he has a strong fantasy season with the Lakers this year or would you afford him in some of your fantasy drafts? Two other players in this range who I think could disappoint your fantasy teams this year includes number one, DeJounte Murray of the Atlanta Hawks. Murray had an amazing season last year, career highs in pretty much every major fantasy category. And surprisingly, he actually finished as a top 10 fantasy player in most standard 12 team leagues last year. However, he is entering a very unfavorable fantasy situation in Atlanta this season. Seeing who he has to share the floor and the ball with this season, simply just better over players like Trey Young, John Collins, Capella, and Badanovich. I think Murray has a very small chance not to regress this year, unless someone like Trey Young goes down with a major injury super early on in the season. Cause compared to last year, there's simply just too much talent around Murray this season, which likely means he won't be the main high usage player for the team every night. In standard 12 team leagues, I wouldn't be surprised to see Murray finish off next season as a third round player instead of his early Yahoo preseason rankings. Subscribe. Dame Lillard of the Portland Trail Blazers is another all-star guard I'm not so sure about. He's 32 coming back from a major surgery and playing on a Portland Trail Blazers team likely to do very little damage in the Western Conference this year. So even if Dame is back at 100% to start the season and let's say he balls out for the first few months, I feel like his production and fantasy value can significantly drop off sometime early in January. So basically during the crucial few months before your fantasy playoffs. Cause if things go south early, I think Portland might be tempted to initiate a rebuild by then, making Dame a very likely shutdown candidate. So kind of like what the OKC Thunder did with SJ over the past few years. So no, I wouldn't completely afford Dame on draft day, but at the 11 to 20 range, depending on who falls to me, I feel like there's a good chance that at least two or three safer picks might be available for me to go after rather than Dame, who can potentially give me much better value for a larger part of next season, especially during crisis. Crunch time. 
Moving a little bit further down to the 20 to 25 range, I feel like three other players you have to be a little bit cautious about and try not to have on too many of your fantasy teams includes LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, and Donovan Mitchell. LeBron will be turning 38 next year and only average around 50 games per season over the last two years. He is obviously nearing the end of his career and I don't think we'll see LeBron be asked to carry his team for 75 games plus like like back in his Cleveland days a few years ago. Meanwhile, Kawhi Leonard has been a risky pick in fantasy basketball for the past three or four seasons now. Ever since leaving San Antonio, him being load managed and missing back-to-back -back games have been pretty pretty well documented. If the past few years tells us anything, he is one of the most likely top 20 players to miss at least 10 to 20 games, even when he is completely healthy. Because obviously management don't really care about hiding that fact. But if Kawhi gets injured, I think the LA Clippers will be extra cautious and I wouldn't be surprised to see Kawhi miss closer to 30 games. So depending on who you draft with your first round pick and your third round pick, using a second rounder on Kawhi might actually backfire, especially if he misses more time than expected. Next I have Donovan Mitchell. Now unlike LeBron and Kawhi, I don't think availability will be a huge issue, but rather how much his fantasy value will take a hit sharing the backcourt with another legit high usage guard like Darius Garland. I obviously can't predict the future and can't tell you who will lose more fantasy value this year. However, Mitchell is coming off three very, very strong seasons in Utah. Essentially, he played on a Utah Jazz team with an entire backcourt built around him. So now in the first time of his career being in a one-two punch situation with Garland, I feel like we could see his usage, field goal attempts, assists, and overall scoring take a little bit of a hit this year. So there might be a chance that he won't be able to outplay his draft position. Do you agree or disagree with everything I said in this video? Make sure you let me know in the comments below. And if you like, feel free to call me out as well. If you want to watch more of my crappy videos, then make sure you click the links on the side right here.